Yo, what's up you guys? So a chronoplanes are back. So this begs the question, what's in a chronoplane? Basically, a Soviet engineer named Rostolov Alexiev was obsessed with hydrofoils. And this is a boat that has wings or lifting components underneath the boat, which raises some of the mass of the boat above the water, reducing friction and then enables higher speeds. But it's limited because cavitation occurs when lifted and this disturbs the lift. So Alexiev came up with a solution. And this was to put massive wings on the side of the boat above the water, and then it flies on the surface above the water. This lift happens because of the ground effect, which is essentially a cushion of air one to five meters above the water that keeps the plane suspended. And because most of the craft is out of the water, this reduces drag. And so it improves the fuel efficiency compared to planes of similar sizes. And sometimes they can even be faster than planes. Of course, this was initially designed for military purposes, just like everything back in the day, since the enhanced speed compared to boats allowed for faster attacks and they could avoid enemy radar for longer periods of time since they're lower to the earth. For example, an acronoplane could have crossed the historic D-Day English Channel in about 15 minutes, so that would have been a pretty swift attack. But the Americans weren't building these, it was really just the Russians. And they did have some problems such as taking a long time to turn as well as the seawater rusting out the motors. But nonetheless, they kept building them, they built a few prototypes, and then they realized that as the craft became bigger, it became more efficient at scale. So they built a massive one called the KM. And it was massive, it had a wingspan of 36 meters and a length of 92 meters, which compared to a modern day Boeing 747-100, those have a wingspan of 60 meters and a length of only 70 meters. So even though it's only slightly longer than the modern aircraft, in 1966, this was the largest aircraft out there and it had a maximum takeoff weight of 544 tons with a max speed of 500 kilometers an hour or around 310 miles per hour. But anyways, the Soviet regime changed and Alexiev lost support for chrono planes. They built smaller and smaller ones and then eventually he was demoted and a few years later he died. We're not really sure how and his dream of chrono planes was never fully realized until now. A startup named Regent just announced last week that they raised $9 million in funding to bring chrono planes back to life. I found out about them through Twitter, of course, Deli and Asparov co-led their round along with Caffeinated Capital, Mark Cuban, and more. And they're building a prototype called the Sea Glider. And it will have a top speed of 180 miles per hour and a max range of 180 miles. So as you can see, they're using a rotor design to propel the vehicle, which is slightly different from other chrono planes. And hopefully they have some good methods for dealing with the salt water that the early design struggled with. But what's really interesting to me is that it's completely electric. So of course, this means it's emission free, but also, it means that while their first vehicle can only get a distance of 180 miles, they claim that with next-gen batteries, and a lot of startups claim this, but with next-gen batteries, they'll be able to get around 500 miles distance. And they'll need this distance because, for example, if they're transporting passengers, Boston to New York by boat is around 230 miles, and LA to SF is around 400 miles. So, so they'll be doing these later, but the initial routes will be more like New York to the Hamptons or connecting islands in Hawaii. For reference though, 180 miles is still pretty good. It's around twice the distance that a typical electric plane gets. For example, electric plane startup Magni X has a max distance of 100 miles. But this brings up another issue because since their ferry is electric and they're docking at these existing infrastructure ports, they'll need to build charging infrastructure at these ports. But unlike other electric plane taxis, which are building their own landing zones, this obviously makes go-to-market easier because they can just lock in with existing ports other than the charging infrastructure. Another smart go-to-market strategy from them is the fact that they aren't regulated by the FAA, they're actually regulated by the Coast Guard. So it will likely be easier to innovate within the Coast Guard regulatory structure rather than the FAA. For example, there are a lot of fuel improvements that planes just aren't implementing due to FAA taking a long time to approve these changes because, and also, if I had to guess, this is why they named themselves Regent, which stands for Regional Electric Ground Effect Naval Transport. And this name makes it pretty obvious that they consider themselves a naval craft and not an aircraft. And I know that Founders Fund, especially Peter Thiel, he's really into names as destinies. So this isn't super surprising. This name will probably help them continue to escape the FAA. And this loophole around the FAA is also why it seems realistic that their claims that they'll be able to fly passengers in about four years seem like it could happen. And so with this $9 million in funding, they're looking to develop a quarter scale prototype. It will have a wingspan of about four and a half meters and it will weigh 400 pounds. So this means that their final design of the Sea Glider will have an 18 meter wingspan, which is definitely smaller than previous Acrono planes, but they probably have plans to scale it up if it becomes more efficient at scale, or maybe they wanna keep it small so it's more agile. This isn't super clear. 
One piece of information that I wish we had was his carrying capacity. Right now they're just focused on carrying passengers, which is a pretty high dollar cargo. I'd also be interested just to see how much they can carry with one of these crafts. Most existing cargo ships are basically fast enough for these short distances, but I, I still think that'd be a great piece of information. Now they'll be doing their initial prototype development and testing in the Boston area, which makes sense since the founders are from MIT, but they're also looking for some other areas since waves during the season may pose a problem. And this is another great point is that it's unclear if they solved how to keep the ground effect in wavy waters because most of chronoplane footage is in very clear water. You rarely see any waves. This is because I, I believe the waves disrupt the ground effect. And so obviously it would be not ideal to have a ferry schedule that gets disrupted by a, a little wind. Anyways, they plan to be flying their first prototype at the end of this year, which is an awesome timeline. And if any of them see this or anybody knows them, I, I'm probably getting con. I'd love to come check that out and, you know, make a video about your prototype um, as you build this. That'd be pretty sweet. So definitely reach out. But anyways, I just wanted to make a quick video on the Acrono planes. I think this is pretty cool for the future. I'm excited to see this retro tech come to life soon. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, all the things. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.